Welcome to New York's number two sports show. The Rangers beat the Islanders 5-2, and they improved to 11-1 in the second game of back-to-backs. That stat is remarkable. The fact that they've had 12 back-to-backs in general, that's a large number. I, I think the Islanders, in comparison, they're now 0-5. It's completely on the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, and they've played less back-to-backs. They're, I think, 0-5-3 or so. Rangers 11-1, and one, and the only Ranger loss was actually the one to Columbus where the Rangers were looking to break that record and extend the win streak to 11. And they were coming off of a pretty tough game against the Flyers the day before, but that was also a Saturday-Sunday back-to-back. Difference here is that Pittsburgh game yesterday, It, as you look back on it, it kind of worked out where Laviolette and I'm sure the coaching staff instilled and like were not thrilled about the defensive effort. So they probably got a little bit of a hearing from the coach. And so even though they got the win, you know, it didn't allow for as much complacency. And, you know, this was just Sturgeon versus Sorokin. And, you know, the Rangers were just simply the better team, really from the jump. And, you know, the Rangers were losing one nothing into the first, but just contributions up and down the lineup in this one. Uh, five even strength goals for the Rangers. Bottom six was really good. Ryan Lindgren did sustain what could be a pretty significant injury. Uh, kind of an awkward hit uh, along the boards with uh, J.G. Pajo. And we'll see. He couldn't put much weight. I think it was his left leg. We'll see. I mean, with Lindgren, it's always tough to tell. He is very injury prone, right? And I've said this before, like in terms of, you know, him being successful, having like in having a long career, I do have my doubts just because, again, there's just so many injuries that he you know, sustains. Um, But that's a conversation for another day. But as far as this season goes, I'm hopeful that this isn't going to be, you know, a season slash playoff ender for Lindgren. There's no way to know, right? But even, like, I'll sign up, like, let's say, like, Truba, you know, he was out two to three weeks. Even if, let's say, Lindgren, this is termed as, like, a three to four week injury. I think that they can survive that. You know, if he's out for, like, a lot of the rest of the regular season. There's 14 games to go. I think that they can maintain. And the reason for that is I'm just so impressed by what I'm seeing from these young defensemen who are really stepping up in a major, major way. Big time game from Keandre Miller. And it's been a lot more good than bad. And I I do think, I'm going to continue to say it, I think that him playing with Schneider, but more so just not playing with Truba, I think it's bringing the best out of him and him kind of being like the leader of his defensive pair. Also, Braden Schneider has just been steady, solid, and, and just looking more and more comfortable. And then Zach Jones, who, you know, did not play for a long, long time. This is as good of a stretch as I've seen him in his career. And, and he's had, it's funny, because Zach Jones is a young defenseman, but he did make his debut at the tail end of the 2021 season. So, like, it's interesting. He's been on the Rangers for parts of four seasons, and you wouldn't really think that. So it's he's always kind of been there more in Hartford. But, yeah, like, also playing with a ton of confidence, showing some speed. His offensive instincts are great. So if Lindgren is out, I think your most logical situation for defensive pairs, I think they leave Miller with Schneider would be my guess. I think Gustafson would be with Fox, and I think it'll be Jones with Ruedel. So Chad Ruedel will, will now very likely make his – Ranger debut coming up uh, next game against Winnipeg. And we'll talk about this week's schedule. A lot of heavy hitters and uh, big games against, you know, some of the league's best. But, yeah, I, I, that's where I think they'll go with it. And a big reason for that is the fact that I think that the coaching staff is aware that they want to keep Jones away from Schneider if possible. So, because, you know, some might say, hey, like, maybe they should try... Miller with Fox, Jones with Schneider, and Gustafson with Ruedel. I wouldn't go in that direction personally. Do I love the idea of Gustafson with Fox? Not necessarily, but that's just what you have to do. And, you know, Jones and Riedel, in terms of, like, that's not, like, a very, uh, it's not a big size and strength defensive pair, but I think you just, it's the lesser of all evils, and you just hope that they're able to do what they have to do. So, uh, you know, look, it's tough. Uh, if Lindgren is out for any significant length of time. That that won't be good. Uh, I'd be lying if I said it is, but but I think that they can handle it. I, I can't say enough good things about this coaching staff and this team. Uh, this was... I, I was a little bit skeptical about this game 
this schedule has been brutal. And so and, and it has been as well for the Islanders, too. I mean, the Islanders played yesterday. They've had a tough schedule as well. But the Rangers, uh, this was their fifth game in seven days and sixth game in nine days. And they came out of it, you know, kind of with flying colors and just this post-deadline looking team. It's been good. It's been good. Like, it's not sexy additions, but that's exactly what it needed to be. It, last year went crazy. It just, it, it, it once they got Kane, it, it just, it, it wasn't right. It wasn't exciting. I, that's the word I kept on using last year. Yeah, it was exciting. But that wasn't the recipe for success. They kind of went back to what worked in 2022. And this iteration of the Rangers it is a little bit better than that one in 2022. Different strengths and weaknesses. But I think coaching staff is a big one, honestly. And, and at the time, I didn't really recognize it as much. You know, it was draw glance for a season. And it was a major step up from what we had seen. So a lot of praise went to him. But seeing you know what Laviolette brings to the table and, and the rest of his staff, um, they, they just have this team ready to go. And the system is exactly what it needs to be. So Islanders Rangers, afternoon game. Like I said last episode, this was the first game between these two teams uh, at MSG or really in a non-outdoor venue in a long, long time. Since December 2022, I was I actually happened to be at that game, and little did I know that the Rangers would not be playing the Islanders for quite a bit of time later. So, you know, this was a big game for the Islanders. They're right on the edge of, of that playoff line, and we'll see whether they get in or not. I, I tend to think that they still will sneak in, but they, they are a very inconsistent team, if nothing else. But... Um, yeah, not a lot of penalties, but there was a little bit of a stretch where there were in the first. So, I thought the Rangers came out strong. First 10 minutes were really good, but they had nothing to show for it. Also, I should mention um, for the forward lines, a couple of changes that worked. And we've seen lately that Laviolette has made some changes to the third and fourth line. The first, the top six has been the same, right? It's been Kreider, Zibanejad, Roslovic, Panarin, Trocek, Lafreniere. But for the third and fourth line, it's been changed, and it happened again. So the third line was, I believe, Kako on the left. And we've, we haven't really seen that much. Now, Kako is a right wing, but uh, I think it was Kako on the left, Wenberg in the middle, Bradzinski on the right. I, I know Wenberg was, of course, in the middle, and I would think that it was that it was Bradzinski on the right side. And that line actually scored a couple goals. And then the fourth line, or I, I don't like to... When it comes to... I think we just have to call it top six and bottom six. You know, there's a clear distinction there. So the other line was Goodrow, Center, and Cooley, and Vizi. And the reason Laviolette said after the game why he did this was being at home, he kind of viewed it as a matchup line. I think he was praising Cooley's defensive abilities uh, was basically what was going on there. And look, he seems to be more defensively responsible than Brodzinski. But you get goals in this game by Brodzinski, by Cooley, by Kako. Uh, and that's huge. I mean, if they're to get contributions offensively from the bottom six, that's great. And the interesting thing was, and Johnny Brzezinski was the first star of the game, you could have really gone in a number of different directions in this one. The only player that had, like, the Rangers scored five goals, but only one player had two points, and that was Keandre Miller, um, who had a couple of assists. But I think that Brzezinski, even though he played well, and, and he hadn't been, uh, Matt Rempe will be eligible from the suspension to come back uh, versus Winnipeg, and I would believe, I have no reason to think otherwise, that it'll be, you know, barring injury, that it'll be Rempe taking the spot of Brodzinski. Now, not exactly in that line, right? I think I think that they'll go back to Cooley, Wenberg, Kako, and it'll be VZ, Goodrow, um, Rempe. That would be my guess. Maybe they do somehow. I, I'd be surprised, but maybe somehow Rempe does play with Kako and uh, Wemberg. I, I wouldn't think so, but I, I guess we'll see. But yeah, so um, still would expect that to be the case. But they did play well without Rempe. Um, but I think that, you know, he does add a different element and a different dimension to the team. So again, going back, first period, um, there was a slew of penalties, you know, so at 11.57, Trocek holds Matt Barzell. Ranger penalty deal did a very nice job in this game. They actually went free, three for three. I, I love what the PK has been doing lately. Power play has been inconsistent, and we know the personnel is good, but the penalty kill is just rising and rising, and I'm pretty sure they are a, a top five unit in the league. So they kill that off before it actually ends. 
Pierre Engvall is, is called for holding the stick of Ryan Lindgren. And what happens is it's four on four briefly. And the Islanders, I guess, win the defensive zone draw. And what happens is right around the time that the Trocheck penalty ends is right after. The Islanders clear it down. I think there was some confusion on the Rangers' part whether they were going to call icing. I think it was correctly called. It was not icing. I think it happened. It was close, but right after. And Eric Gustafson makes a pretty bad mistake where instead of just holding on to it, is which is what he did, he just kind of flings it around the boards and it goes to, I believe it was Brock Nelson. Um, Brock Nelson ends up being a great pass to Bo Horvat. So it was either Horvat to Nelson, back to Horvat. Either way, Gustafson makes a bad play. Adam Fox didn't expect it, but he probably could have been a little bit sharper as well. Igor was thrown off. It just, But I, I kind of put the most blame on Gustafson. But... You know, I wish Fox maybe had to stick down and stop. It was a great pass by Brock Nelson. He feeds Bo Horvat, and Horvat scores his 28th goal of the season. So a short end of goal, that, that was a tough break and kind of went against the flow of what was going on, too. Uh, and so then the Rangers probably doesn't even last long. So the Islanders score that goal, then Adam Fox is called for interference on Casey Sezikis. And I'm not sure what Fox could have done differently, although I will say Fox, this has been multiple times now where he's been called for that interference at the offensive uh blue line so uh, anyway rangers kill that off and the islanders leave the period up one nothing but rangers deserved a better fate and in the second period they came out strong and the rangers have been a really good second period team this season uh and at 27 seconds into it mika zibanejad scores his 22nd goal of the season and assisted by jack roslovic adding roslovic to that line has really helped out mika so now that's another even strength goal we saw him break that Schneid versus the Devils. So that's a really, really good thing to see. Really nice shot by Zibanejad off the feet from Roslovic. And there was an Islander turnover before that. So that makes it 1-1. And then the Rangers take the lead at 10-14. Will Cooley scores his 12th goal of the season from Lindgren and Fox. So a really bad job by the Islanders where Lindgren finds Cooley kind of and he streaks it all alone and puts a nice wrist shot. You know, I'm not sure... You know, maybe Sorokin could have stopped it, but you know, still, Will Cooley, 12 goals, been a really, really nice rookie season for him. Uh, but at 13.55, off of a, of a one faceoff by the Islanders, Bo Horvat scores again, second of the game, 29th of the season from Nelson and Riley. What happens here is I wish that Kreider could have gotten the puck out of the zone. Granted, I, I think it was Horvat that kind of may have prevented it, to be fair, but I do feel like Kreider sometimes, I notice where he, I guess he doesn't want to ice the puck, but sometimes he goes a little bit soft. I, I wish, hey, if it ends up being icing, it ends up being icing. So I think he could have done a little bit more with that. Also, Goodrow was on for the faceoff, and Horvat just kind of beat Goodrow in front of the net. And so Horvat, who's really been a, a really good addition for the Islanders, and, you know, it has become a, a core member of that team. That ties it up at two. But the Rangers, their responses this season and lately have been really good. Rangers are 16-3-1 in their last 20 games. Johnny Bradzinski, who has been struggling lately, scores. And he really had a nice game, even besides the goal. He scores his fifth goal of the season from Miller and Wenberg. So um, Miller just fires a really hard slap shot. And Bradzinski has positioning in front, just puts his stick down. And because it deflects off of Bradzinski's stick, it's able to squeak past Sorokin. And uh, I should also mention, uh, after I recorded the episode yesterday, it did come out that they changed the scoring of that first uh, of the Kako goal yesterday, and they gave Wenberg an assist because I had said, you know, he was kind of in on that and deserved credit. So Wenberg gets an assist here. So, um, you know, he hasn't really factored in much on the score sheet. I think it's now like three secondary assists for Wenberg, but uh, still, he has definitely come in and done a nice job. And then after this is where the Lindgren injury happens. And yeah, you know, it was just, uh, you know, Pajot, it, it wasn't anything dirty, but it was just, didn't look good. He was holding his knee, to, couldn't put much weight on it, and just hoping for the best for Lindgren. I, I've already kind of accepted the fact that, hey, if he's out for a while, that's fine. You just hope this doesn't lead into the playoffs or be some sort of season-ending injury. So fingers crossed as far as Lindgren's concerned. Alexi Lafreniere is called for tripping at 1745. He trips Brock Nelson. So a late power play in the second period for the Islanders at the Rangers PK gets the job done. Rangers take a 3 2 league going to the third. And the Rangers have been a good third period team for the most part. And a really big goal at 236. It's Capo Caco scoring his 10th goal of the season from Gustafson and Jones. So 
really good zone time for the Rangers, and Kako just finds kind of a lane, moves in and fires it past Sorokin, and, and that's what you want to see from him. So that's good stuff. So 10 goals for Kako. How many games has he played this season? 47. So, like, he missed, what was it? I guess a couple of months, maybe a little less than two months. He was out for a while. So as much as the numbers and the overall production aren't great, like, if he had been healthy, he certainly could have been looking at getting somewhere close to 20 goals by the time it's all said and done. Look, we'll see what he does in his last 14 games, but... He has been coming on a lot more strong lately, and, you know, hopefully confidence builds for Kako. That was nice to see, the way he scored. So that makes it 4-2. And then the other uh, the other young gun, Alexi Lafreniere, scores his 19th goal of the season from Panarin and Miller at 10-42. So it was funny. When it was 4-2, I'm thinking, wow, you get four goals by the Rangers, all at even strength, and none from the Panarin line. But, of course, they do get in on, get in on the act. And a really nice pass by Panarin. Good shot by Lafreniere. So he Lafreniere ties a career high in goals in 19. And uh, barring anything crazy, he will surpass that. And we'll see how far he can take it. But that's the great thing about this game. was And a really great third period. Rangers would win 5-2. But I was impressed by this one. Much more than the Penguin game. I, I really thought that this was going to be a lot more down to the wire than it was. But yeah. And the Rangers have been good at home. And that's the other thing. Let's talk about their record. Rangers are um, 45, 19, and 4. They are 24 and 8 at home. And look, 21, 11, and 4 on the road, that, that ain't bad at all. But out of the 14 games left, 9 of the 14 are at home. And if you include today's game, it was actually 10 of the last 15. And that's good news. So Rangers this week. Tuesday home against Winnipeg, Thursday at Boston, and then Saturday home against Florida. Those are three of the best teams in the NHL. If the Rangers can somehow get out of those games, let's say take four of six points, you know, win two of three or something, and get through March. Because I know at the end of March, towards the end of March, they're at Colorado. But the April schedule really, A, it lightens up, and it's a lot of home games. So, like, if they can stay healthy and kind of keep their foot on the gas, they really should end up with a lot of points and maybe be in that president's trophy discussion. Uh, not that that always works out. It's, it's kind of a jinx with that, but just the overall idea of like them ending up uh, really hot in the standings. That said, like, look, Carolina is still right there for the division. So, so a lot of the line always you look at it, but the Rangers will leave today technically in first place in points percentage. So they are tied with Florida, 68 games played, 94 points, but based on the second tiebreaker, uh, which is regulation and overtime wins. The Rangers have one more than Florida. It's getting too deep into the weeds, and the Rangers play the Panthers, like I said, at home on Saturday. And that'll go a long way, but based on that, now Boston does have one more point than the Rangers and Panthers, but they've played one more game. But I like to base it off a of points percentage, and if you go off that, the Rangers are going to leave today first in the National Hockey League. So a lot to like. Obviously, the Lindgren injury, that's a bit of a downer. And hopefully they get okay news on that. Um, just, you know, really just hoping it's not a season-ending season ending injury. But this was a really good game for the Islanders. This ends kind of what was a really grueling stretch. Although, look, like, it's not... The Rangers, they... I, I think there's only maybe, like, one or two more instances where they have, like, two days off in between games for a while. So, back-to-backs won't be a thing. Uh, in fact... In fact, this might have actually be. Let me just see real quick here. This might have been their last back-to-back -back set of the season. It was. It actually was. So they will finish the season 11-1 in back-to-back -back games. Just remarkable. And they only have, uh, let's see. Yeah, just one more situation the rest of the year where there's two games in between. That's in between Florida on the 23rd and the Flyers on the 26th. After that, starting with that March 26th uh, Flyers game for the rest of the Rangers season, it's it's game one day off to the next, game one day off to the next, and so on and so forth. So I think I don't mind that. And that's kind of what the schedule will look like. In the What's kind of good about that is that's kind of what the playoff schedule looks like for the most part. Rarely do you get back-to-back -back games. It does happen sometimes. 
and rarely do you get two days in between games. It's usually that sort of schedule, so that should set them up well. So, looking forward to that. But, uh, yeah, Rangers get the job done. Very impressive win. They beat the Islanders by a score of 5-2.